least for me. And welcome to the classroom. Tim here from Lessons on the Web once again. And welcome to the live stream. If you've never been to one of these live streams, then uh, welcome. We usually, I teach a lesson or two, and then we have a Q&A at the end. This is kind of a surprise live stream I have at the in the middle of the day. I usually have them Fridays and Saturday evenings. Like I said, evenings for me. Uh, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so make sure to check those out. If you want to learn more, you can see actually on the screen there, it says uh, go to pianolessonsontheweb.com slash community. So head over there when you're finished with the live stream here, and then you can see the calendar of when we meet and everything you need to know. So here we go. Let's get started today. All right, everybody, today we are talking about figured base notation first. One thing I want to mention is this is going, I'm going to put this in one of the courses I have over on my website. If you're watching the recording, you may be there already. And this is going to be part of music theory level three, I believe. I'm going to stick it in that course. So there's going to be some things I assume you know already. If you want to catch up on this and you want to learn, you know, how to learn all the stuff between the beginning up to now, Head over to pianolessonsontheweb.com where I have a ton of courses on piano and music theory and all kinds of things uh, like that. But of course you don't have to. So sit back and enjoy the lesson for today. So here we go. So a lot of times when they write out what kind of chords to play, they'll write, you know, if for E major, they'll just write E like above the staff. So let me show you what I mean. So say they want to tell you to play an E major chord like that. A lot of times what they will do is they will write just E, a capital E. Or if they want an E minor, they'll write either a lowercase E or an E with a lowercase m next to it. But a lot of times now, when we're talking deep into music theory, we're talking about the different types of chords that we have in a scale. So you have the, the first chord, there's eight chords generally in a major scale, and they have names for them. The first one's the tonic, then you have the supertonic, mediant, subdominant, dominant, mediant, and then leading tone. As you can tell, I've practiced this a lot, although it may take you some time to know those like the back of your hand. So a lot of times what they'll do is they'll write the Roman numeral of whatever chord it is. So say we are in E major. Let me change our key signature here. Okay, we have four sharps, F, C, G, and D. And this is, so basically to simplify it for you, if you're not familiar, if we're, you have an E major chord and we're in the key of E major, that's what we call a one chord tonic chord and it's written as a basically an uppercase one so it will look like this I don't know why it made the screen do that there we go so it looks like an uppercase one let me see if I can move it not really but anyway usually they will have the chord symbol right underneath or the notation rather right underneath the chord you are looking at now that's a, for a root position chord, and basically what figured bass is all about is it's telling you which note is in the bass and basically how far apart those notes are in terms of intervals. So if you ever see these, you may be confused to what they mean. So this is how you write a root position chord. Usually that you just write whatever chord number it is, in this case one, Roman numeral I, and you, will, you won't write anything, but sometimes it will look like this actually. So let me get this situated here. Sometimes it will look like, let me see if it'll let me do this. It won't let me do this very well, but let me do it this way. So there's the I, right? And they'll do this. They'll write five, three. Good thing I can write with the pen. There we go. So they'll write five, three. So if it says five, three, or if it's nothing at all like this, then 
it's a root position chord. Now, what if it's in first inversion? Remember to put a chord invert in inversion. What you do is you take the bottom note and you move it to the top here. Let me turn on some volume there with my tablet. And so now we have to learn how to how they notate this because if they write the chord and then they write a different kind of thing as you'll see here in a second, you might get confused. So let's take a look here. So now that's in first inversion, this is exactly how it works. The numbers work exactly like this. So you have this bottom note here, the G, you have the top note E. Those are one, two, three, four, five, six apart from each other. So you're going to write a six. I can write that a little bit better, I think. So they can write a six. Next, they will write the distance between the bottom note and the next note up, the middle note. So it's going to be from here to there. Well, that's one, two, three. So you count what note you're on. You count the whatever's in between, and then you count the ending note, and that gives you the number. So that's how far apart that one is. That's a third apart. So if you write I63, that is whatever whatever key you're in. So if you're in the key of A, I would mean the first chord, which would be A major, whatever the name of the key is. And then 6-3 would mean that you have 6 apart from the bottom note and the top note. And then 3, because there's only three notes between there. So that's how it works. Now, what do we do if you have now a second inversion chord? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so here's how they, well, first of all, this is how it would look like. So here's our E major chord again. Now in second inversion. So it works the same way. Remember that step one is for the top number is to find the distance between that and that right there, the bottom and the top note. Well, hey, if we take a look here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, it's sharp there, but it's still six. I guess that's how I should have counted it. So it's six away, you put, so you write six here. You can count it on the staff too. It might be a little easier that way. And then this time, we're looking for the distance between these bottom two notes, and that will be designated with a four. So it would say I64 for second inversion. Let's do another example just to kind of drive it home. So let's change key signature here. And let's say we're in the key of G, make things a little bit simple. And let's say it says this. Oops. Let's say it says two. Okay, first of all, what if it just says two there and we're in the key of G? Well, you go one note up in the G major scale, that happens to be A. You build a chord on it, and that's your second chord, since that's a number two Roman numeral. Now, it's not capitalized because if it's under undercase, it's going to tell you that that chord happens to be a minor chord. So this is what it would look like. So if we're in G, it would be an A minor chord. It would look exactly like this. Now, what if it had this? What if it said 2, 6, 4? Well, we're in the right chord already, so no need to alarm ourselves. Well, let's see if we invert it, if it will make it the correct amount. Well, remember that if you invert it once, that the distance on the top and the bottom is six, so that is correct. But there's only three, one, two, three, on the bottom. So that doesn't match up. So it's got to be a second inversion chord. It'll probably look something. It Not probably. It will look exactly like this. Let's move it down an octave just to kind of show you it being too high up there so if it said two six four it would mean that you know e is on the bottom and then you have you know the top two notes just like that it was supposed to be a minor so there we go now same key 
but what if it had this? So first of all, that says 7 is supposed to be a diminished chord. That's what that little circle is about. So in G major, the 7th note, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Remember, G major has an F sharp in it. So it's going to be your F sharp. You're going to build a diminished chord on that. And that's how you would write it. It would be F sharp A, C on the staff. But what, what if they did this? What if they wrote 6, 3? Well... You would find your chord, and then you would invert it, and then you say, well, does it match up? Well, there's six here and three here, so we would write on staff A, C, and then F sharp. Whoa, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. A, C, whoops, let me do this. There we go. So let me fix that. Not sure why I did that again, but anyway, there we go. So that is you are uh, your correct answer there. Okay, let's do one more. Let's say we're in the key of C. So let me change this back here. And now we have another chord. So let's say they have, and remind, whenever you reset and do a new key, you want to play the scale of that key because it tells you what notes are in the scale. First note, second note, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. When you see the Roman numeral, you know what note you're basing the chord on. So what if they had something like this? Um, we're in key of C, and then they have... Six, and then... I don't know why it does that. Stop it. Oh, that gets rid of it. That's handy. Okay, so anyway, you have six, and then you have... Uh, let's do a tricky one. Let's say it says 6 and then 5, 3. Ooh, we haven't talked about this one in a couple of minutes. So, what do we do? Well, you go up to the 6th note of the scale, since it's a 6. And because it's under case, the Roman numeral, it's indicating that it's, pr it's going to be a minor chord. So you go up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You build a triad on that. And then find out what inversion we need to do to get to 5, 3. Well, looking at a root position triad, you look at, well, what's the distance between the bottom note and the top note? Well, that's five, right? In fact, that's the only option that has five there. And then you have three there. So that's just a root position, a minor chord. It's gonna look like this. I have no idea why is it not oh you know why i think it's getting confused because i'm writing the numbers up here so if i write like let me write five three like way up here there we go see it's thinking that those are notes i really should be using the pen instead so anyway that is five three and that will look like this now there you go that works a little bit better that was my misuse of the technology that's why it was giving me so much trouble Okay, so that does it for figured base notation. Now, remember that figured base notation basically is all about telling you uh, what note is on the bottom of the chord, or basically it's all about telling you what the intervals are between the notes. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind. So say we have uh, this example we just did, right? Six, five, three. Well, here's the thing to know about chords that I should mention before we end here. What if it does this? They leave out the A here and they write an A on the bottom down there. Well, that's still 5-3 because it's all about, it, it has, you still have the A on the bottom 
and uh, just to let you know that they do split them up between the hands sometimes to figure these out what I do to make them a little easier is I'll move the bass note up to like up an octave to where it is in the treble and then you can see you know actually I know my chords so well I just know what they are but you know I used to do that to bring them up all under the same octave and then you can figure out what chord it is a little bit easier but just to let you know they do do that a lot where you won't see just a triad in one hand you'll see it split between many hands so that's the explanation for figured bass remember that this is part of well you may be watching it already as part of this but it's all part of music theory at level three which is a course i have over on my website piano lessons on the web.com so head over there if you're not already but if you're already a part of it I'll see you in the next lesson in the course. Okay, so we're going to do another lesson now. Uh, hopefully everybody has been hanging on. So hello, everybody. Hello, Aradia. Hello, uh, Atish, if I'm pronouncing that right. Hello. Super is back again. I don't know if you've been here before, but Super is a super cool name. Hans. Hello, Hans. Hello, listening, listening intently. All right, very good. Okay, so here we go for the next part. Oh, thanks, Brian. Great to have you with us again. Brian is a regular here at the live stream. And it's always great to see new and returning names and faces, of course. So you're always welcome back anytime. So here is the second part of today's live stream lesson for those watching on YouTube. This is all about how you should sit at the piano, just to kind of give you some general tips as a beginner. This is going to be in the Introduction to Piano and Music course. And we are learning today basically how to sit at piano how far away you should be sitting at the piano now with my camera set up right now I can only explain so much also I'll try to fit in some clips of people sitting at the piano to you know make it a little bit more graphic for you but or I'll put up some diagrams I mean there's plenty of things of like how you should set the piano online so I'll at least find a video for you or an image or something and until I can make a video with a better camera set for this because I really need different cameras on the side and things like that so Here's the first thing, is you want to, first of all, be comfortable at the piano. You don't want to be too comfortable, though. You really don't want to be slouching. Slouching is bad. But you don't want to be sitting up so straight that you feel like all your back muscles are real tense and your shoulders are tense and you're real tense. You shouldn't be tense at all, but you should be sitting up straight. So, you know, when you first sit at the piano, sit up as straight as you can. Even I can do a better job at this for sure. And the longer you sit at the piano, the more likely it is that as you play, you'll start to lean forward. You don't want to do that. You want to try to keep in mind sitting up straight and level. You want to be, you know, basically in front of middle C, I would say, pretty close. Actually, what I do is I sit a little bit to the left of middle C. And that's because on my right hand, if I'm setting my right hand thumb on middle C, which is very common. I actually might be slightly over here even. But yeah, almost lined up with that. So because my left hand thumb is hitting C, I just want to be moved over a little bit. So that's my thumb is really what's centered in the center of my body, not my hand. Because if my hand was it, I'd be a little bit over to the right. So just sit at the piano, put your thumb down on C and put your hand in you know C position, they call it. And center your thumb with the center of your body. And that's generally how I sit at the piano. I feel like that that's a good center point for me. The idea is you want to be able to play up and down the piano effectively and also be able to play for longer periods at a time without getting tired. But there's certainly a lot more you can get out of playing the piano if you learn to sit at the piano correctly. So in, in terms of how far you should sit at the as far away from the piano, I'm going to talk about right now you really should be this is a little different for everybody because people definitely have longer legs than others and you'll definitely have to sit further back you know to be able to press the pedals if you have really really long legs and things like that i find that most people whether that you're short or tall sit 
too close to the piano. And what happens when you do that is your motion is restricted. It also kind of messes with your posture. Like I feel like when I'm too close, my posture is almost bending back a little bit. It should be, you know, straight up. It shouldn't be forced in any way back or forward. So, and if you feel like you have triceratops arms, especially, you are way too close. So you want to, you know, first of all, when I sit at the piano, I maybe sit too close and then I back up until my arms are like an appropriate length from the piano. Let me see if I can show you in a better picture here. I think I can set this up like real quick hold on here you go this is this is a good i'm surprised this is all set up already so here we go so here we are at the piano now i can kind of show you a bit better about how far to sit so you don't want to be like you don't want to have your arms stretched out like the mummy you also you know if you sit too close you get you know i still can't quite see but you get like triceratops arms there you can see that you want to you know, maybe sit too close and then back up to where your arms are level. You know, you don't have your arms like like pointed up like this. You don't have them dragging down like that. You want them nice and level and you want to feel comfortable and you want to feel like you're, you can be able to move your arms up and down the piano comfortably. Also, when you're playing scale patterns down and high, when you get more advanced, you'll actually want to tilt your body that way. So you also want to, when you sit at the piano, just tilt your body, so I'm, I'm tilting at the hip here, down to the left, and then tilting gently up to the right. You never want to get physically get up from the, the piano keyboard. So you want to sit in the center, you want to be far enough away for where you're comfortable. When I sit at the piano, my if I don't have my foot on the pedal and I just have them straight down, uh, my knees almost make a 90 degree angle it doesn't have to be perfect but that's generally where my knee is now if i have my one foot out to press the the pedal on the bottom uh then you know the one foot will still be at about 90 degrees although i'm a little bit you know i'm a little bit more laid back so my one foot might sit forward a little bit but that's generally where i am if i just keep my feet you know, in front of me, right in front of me. And they actually do line up with the beginning of the keys pretty much. I mean, it's a little bit underneath where they start, but you shouldn't have your feet way under, and you also shouldn't have them way back. If, you, if your knees are actually like a couple inches away from the keyboard, you're way too far back. You want to fit until they fit just underneath. You know, sit at the keyboard and you'll understand, but you can actually see right here almost. If I had the... If I had the light, the light's not pointed exactly right away. You can see, though. So here, here are the beginning of my knees. And that is where they are. You can see that they're just obscured down here. They're not too far in. They're maybe like an inch underneath. And that's where they go. And that's how that's comfortable for me to sit at the piano. I'm sitting up straight. I don't have my... I have my shoulders um, not slouched forward. But not clenched back either, like you're about to do some kind of fly press at the gym. You just have them set back and relaxed. So you want to relax your shoulders, you want to relax your arms, your elbows, and... Like I said, as you tilt up and down on the keyboard, or as you go up and down the keyboard, you'll tilt gently from side to side, so you also want to make sure that that motion is comfortable as well. And I say once you have all those set up, you know, you're centered at the keyboard with your thumb, you're sitting back comfortably where your knees are just underneath the piano, uh, you can, you know, reach the pedal with ease, you can tilt from side to side. Once you have all those factors in place, I would say you're probably in the best position to start playing. Now there's other tips I can give you, like you definitely will want to get either a mirror and put it, in eyesight or where you practice I actually don't do that but what I do do from time to time you don't have to do this every time you have to, you practice but I can do it you know here if I set the camera up from the side though um, you can see yourself and your basically your habits and how you sit 
So you may look at first and you may be able to right away because, you know, when you sit at the piano, you really can't see how you're sitting from a side point of view. So with a mirror or recording yourself, you can get that perspective. You can even use your phone or something like that. It doesn't have to be great video quality. So you can see, you know, that you are, whether you're sitting up or down or not, whether you start to slouch over time, that's probably the most common thing is that when you first sit at the piano, even if you set all these things up, after you know 15 minutes, a half hour, an hour practice, what will happen is you will begin, maybe in a couple minutes of practice, you'll begin to slouch forward, which is something that plagues me even. Uh, it happens to me all the time. So those were just some, uh, basically some tips to get you started on how you should sit at the piano. So um, an assignment I want you to do, I really want you to do this, is I want you to either get a mirror or set up somehow with your phone so that you can record yourself playing from the side. And you want to do that maybe, uh, you want to observe yourself playing like that, especially in the beginning, maybe every time you practice, maybe at least once a week I would do that and just kind of look at the recording and evaluate yourself. Are you sitting up straight? Do you feel uncomfortable? Do you look tense? You should be sitting up straight, like I said, but still comfortable at the piano. The more clenched you are in your muscles, uh, for the most part, the more restricted you are going to be playing up and down the keyboard. Another quick tip is, in general, when you're playing up the piano ascending, your the tips of your fingers are going to be pointed slightly that way. It gives you a little bit more surface area to hit the notes. You don't want to be curved way too far that way, because first of all, it's just really uncomfortable and strange. And second of all, it will actually your your fingers will actually start to hit multiple notes. Now, being straight on, like if you're playing chords straight on like that, that's not such a bad thing. But if you're playing a scale, you want to tilt them the direction you're going. So if I'm going down this way, just slightly, you know, it, I could play them like this and it'd be okay, but it's a little bit easier, I find, to tilt them the direction you're going. That will come into play more in like playing the piano level three and things like that, but uh, just to kind of let you know about that before we end today. Okay, everybody. Um, okay, that ends this portion of the lesson. I'll see you back in the classroom for Introduction to Piano and Music. If you're watching this as part of the YouTube stream, which actually won't be po well actually I think I might post this one on YouTube but I will do other streams that like might be in the middle of the day just to kind of get some more viewers in and experiencing my content but a lot of those won't be posted on the YouTube channel they're going to be part of the courses I have over there because I have to record videos for that as well and I just kind of figured that you know if I'm going to be recording videos for the website why not just like give people the opportunity if they join live to be able to see some of it? Now I'm not going to do every video like that. Uh, some of them, if you catch them, you know you can happen to get a little sneak peek into there. So piano lessons on the web.com. I put it in the description. If you want to learn a lot more about piano music, of course you don't have to because we have new free lessons coming out here for beginners on the channel every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So really be on the lookout for that. And then we also have live streams regularly, Fridays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you're on the website and you go to the little community thing at the top on the toolbar, it will take you to the community page where you can see the calendar of when we're planning to meet and uh, what we're talking about. All right, everybody, does anybody have any questions about anything I talked about today? I know I talked for a pretty long time, but like I said, I wanted to get those lessons uh, in gear. So let's see what we got here. Okay, let's see here. Uh, C says, if I want to get better at using both hands, is it just with practice or is there some knack hack or something um that's interesting maybe i should start making piano hack videos like the the hack that will get you playing like a pro 
Although I'll, I'll probably get blamed for using clickbait, which I do not frequently, but anytime I try, anytime I make a clickbaity title, somebody certainly lets me know. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so if you want to get better at playing both hands, uh, here's the thing: is if you want to get better at playing with both hands, you want to play first of all slowly when you first per put something hands together, but you also want to be practicing things like scales. Because these really help with coordination. You know, they're very simple. They're a little bit too simple in most cases, although some of them get pretty fancy. They will really help you develop your proper fingering and hand coordination. I would start with that. I would work up to learning about arpeggios and things like that, maybe even two octave and things like that and then uh, hand and exercises I recommend uh, Carl Cherney exercises as well uh, there's a video that you should definitely check out if you haven't seen it already there city is we have uh, let me see here So if you go to the channel, or if you, I think if you type in two-handed piano, yeah, I am the first real video that comes up that's not an ad. I'm proud of that. So if you go to that, if you type in two-handed piano into YouTube and you click on it, and I'm not going to play my own video. I doubt they would flag me for playing my own video. That would be crazy, but they do that. So anyway, uh, you're going to find a video called Easy Two-Handed Piano Playing Tips and exercises from there you can learn about a lot of things i discussed right now but i go into a lot more detail about it so this is one of the uh it's a really good lesson that i made on this topic All right, any other questions from the viewers? I just want to thank everybody from coming out to, for coming out today. Uh, thank you for being a part of our great community. It's really awesome conversing and learning and helping you learn uh, piano with all these other great students. So let me see who is here today. We had Hans, thanks for coming. Brian, thanks for coming. City, thanks for coming. Super, uh, thanks. Atish, thanks for coming. Aradia, glad to have you back once again. Not sure why they unsubscribed you from my channel. I think that was you. And then if I missed, I might be mistaken, but I think that was it. And then uh, thanks everybody else who made it out today. I'll stick around for a little bit for some additional questions. And then if not, ooh, somebody, uh, Ilyas, if I'm pronouncing that right, Ilyas. Hello and welcome to the live stream. Always welcome to come back again. So I was just telling everybody that we meet usually on Fridays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But we had kind of an impromptu live stream today because I had to record some lessons for my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com. I just kind of wanted to share them with you because I feel like, you know, they would definitely be relevant for this channel. Okay, and in terms of what we're talking about on Friday, when we meet again. Okay, so if you go to the community page, and on Friday, we have piano finger exercises for beginners. So I'm going to come up with, actually, I've already written it a finger exercise for beginners where you can basically develop coordination between different fingers. Now this is probably going to be one of quite a few lessons I'll put out over time. It's not going to be like a series I'll put out right, you know, one after the other. But there's definitely different types of finger exercises, so I think that uh, this one will be an introductory one and then we'll do some more in the future after that. We have the community Q&A on uh, Sunday and then we have another Core trainer video and then tips for playing piano in public on the following Friday. 
All right, everybody, so thanks for coming out. If you have any last-minute questions, let me know. I'll stick around for here for another minute or two. But if not, I'll check you later. Thanks for coming out. Does anybody have any questions? How about this? All right, everybody, have a great day. Great talking with you today in today's live stream. Welcome back to <laughs> Thank You Very Much City. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for coming out. And it was another great live stream. So glad I could help teach you today. And I'll see you in the next video. This has been Tim from Lessons on the Web. And have a great day.